La Playeta Marina, which was very good. We had a good rest and we're ready to continue our voyage. Goodbye, Panama. Necessary for you to get your passports cleared and stamped and the necessary paperwork prepared as well. Our agent boy Ramo, who looked after us going through the canal, he came and visited us uh, prior to our departure and carried out all those uh, all the range for those. Look at all this shipping. We then Amazing. Three of these boats are on anchor. And I suspect they're waiting coming through the canal or they just might be waiting on construction go somewhere else yeah. to pick up rodgers. Yep. Look at the clutter on the screen. The chart plotter. And all those little returns and all the more boats out there. leaving the uh, dock at Panama City, yeah, we've had some karma stuff, but now it's getting pretty light. It sure is. It's definitely what we call lively. Our initial forecast for our departure was for reasonable winds, but uh, initially we found that there was very little wind at all that we could use, so we had to motor on one engine, giving us around seven knots. That went on for around 10 hours, unfortunately, before the wind did kick in. And once the wind did kick in, it was a, a good angle, uh, and we were conscious that the Pacific was proving to be a nice, gentle sea. Yes, yeah, so it was a different motion. There was a, just the one swell, more or less running with us from behind, and that was so different to the Atlantic experience, where it was a little more confused. The sun's coming up and look, our little friend's still up there on the wheel. He's been there all night. Nothing like catching a ride. Our friend is preening himself, stretching. Okay, here we are. We've just crossed, or well, about to cross, the equator. Come on in, Phil. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so as tradition calls for, we now put out. And this is a sacrifice. <laughs> it is a bit of rum to the god of the oceans, Poseidon. We request safe passage to fair winds. Yay! 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 Towards the Galapagos, so we're on that same current flow with the wind behind us. So. Yeah, Fantastic. Yeah, it sure has. Yeah, light wind, yeah, we've done well. And four days ago we left Panama. Yeah, when mate. do you predict that we'll get to Tahiti, guys? In another 21 days. <laughs> 21, says Gordon. That would be nice. What about you, Phil? I'll go 20. 
20. Oh, that's ambitious. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're not I'll, I'll... breaking any equipment. <laughs> well, that's right. We don't want to break, break any equipment, but we don't want to end up in the doldrums either. Well, anyway. Uh, now we've got wild boat sail. Well, we have. We've we got have extra fuel on board and um, calculated how much we can sacrifice to the doldrums. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll see what happens. I'd not to, but we'll see. We may not have to, and if we can sit there in this weather for a while, it's going to get to us anyway. We can stay here, we'll get that That's confidence for you. Ah, oh, look at that sunset. It's the end of the day, day four of our voyage. And today we cross the equator, which is quite, quite an event. The wind has been very gentle and so is the sea. So, quite a relaxing day. See what tomorrow brings. Yesterday we crossed over the equator and uh, at this latitude it is very, very hot. But on the Elba 45, in these conditions, which is very light breeze and nice flat sea, and with the Jenica up, we opened up a beautiful big window at the front to let the breeze into the saloon. And it does make a difference. We're list listening to a podcast and there's a bird threatening to land on the boat, so... Oh. Oh. <laughs> that should scare him off. Not really. Oh, here it comes again. How is it? Last night we had a seabird perch right up there on the boom. And it stayed there all night and we thought, oh, how cute. It was um, a pretty colour. Its beak was blue and uh, quite a sizeable bird. Anyway, in the morning it wasn't at all in a hurry to, uh, to leave us. It just sat there and preened itself and stretched and had a lovely, lovely morning ride. Uh, and then eventually flew off when we put more sail up. Anyway, as much as we thought it was very cute, it wasn't until we had a look at the deck underneath where that bird was perched, and it was putrid. So, Gordon's not going to let any bird land on this deck again. No, 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 no. Was the priority of Here we are travelling from the Panama, to Tahiti and it's about the fifth day and uh, the conditions are looking really good to get our beautiful big um, Code Zero or Jenica up. So this is the first time we've ever had a chance to use it. Quite excited about seeing it go up. But it was around that time the winds were just right and the angle was just right that we could launch a beautiful agenda. So that was the first time we'd put this beautiful big red sail up. It's a symbol with an FP symbol on the top and a big 45. It's a very pretty sail and it actually pulled us along beautifully. It was a very efficient way of sailing in light winds. How's it looking there, Phil? What wind strength have we got? Uh, six and a half knots. Okay. Nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. Yeah, so we've um, put up our big Jenica 
Our carrot has reduced now by about a knot, even two knots. And we're holding the um, speed now, it's sitting at about six knots and eight knots degrees. Fantastic. So very comfortable. Beautiful. So what about the sale? Can we drop it? 12 knots of carrot. 12 of carrot, we're going to pull that down. Put the uh, vanilla back up. Cool. That's correct. Strict rules. Looks, looks beautiful. It does, doesn't it? It's holding its shape. It's pulling well. It looks great. You can probably release the hay at the time of it. Release this. The hay at the time of it. Oh, the hay. We can do that. Better? Not much. <laughs> How big was it? About that long. A bit bigger? Oh, you're not recording. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well I cooked dinner tonight. I wasn't relying on the fish. <laughs> what happened, Gordo? I don't know. I didn't have too much drag on or anything. It was pulling the line out and then it got off. Oh. oh. You still got, you reckon you still got the finger on me? Yeah, it feels like it. Better bring it in and have a look. Yeah, I think so. What a shame. I was looking forward to fish for dinner. It's early in the day. We might still catch one. In this leg of our journey, we've had to provision for you know, 30 days plus, which uh, sometimes can be a bit tricky, but uh, on the Elba, we certainly have a lot of bridge space. It's a beautiful big double bridge here. And under the floor, there are five of these uh, underfloor compartments that hold lots and lots of supplies for us. I put the um, dry goods in there. Uh, I choose not to put the cans and things that might rust in there. They are easily stored in the ample cupboards around the galley. We have a microwave which comes in handy and of course our lovely cooktop and the gas oven along with ample freezer space which has been yeah very very useful in preparing for this long long passage I just heard, Lou, will you get the gaff? Is it in here? No, it's up there on this side. In this one? No, it's there beside the sea. Oh, beside the sea, right. So we've got to undo the safety line. It's not beside the sea. up here. Ah. Okay. And the safety yeah. line? So get those two safety lines away. It's not very big, this is a good size pair of this one. I actually got some salmon out of the freezer. And just put it back? As soon as the rod went off, I quickly opened the freezer and put it back in. I hope it's edible. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's edible. Let's get the gas. Okay. Phil, you can be the gaffer. The gaffer. It's a, it's a ahi mahi. Oh, is it? You beauty. Here's the bucket. Here's the bucket. Here's the bucket. Oh, bugger. 
Oh, oh no. Oh. Darn. I'll have to get the salmon out again. <laughs> so, out of the freezer comes the salmon. Bad luck, Jordan. Better, better luck next time. So, you're downloading weather? Just having a look at what we have downloaded. Okay. So, there's the wind coming up. The south easters. So, we expect to run. Oh, you can't see it. Thanks for coming. So that's at um, 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. It's really yeah. nice. It's five knots. Here we got tonight. Two, four knots. Mm. No wind. So this All information nice. that uh, has been downloaded about the weather has come from the Iridium Go unit that we have installed in the boat. This is the little unit down here. And every hour it sends a position report uh, to go onto our tracker that a lot of our family and friends are following. On the Iridium Go, we can also receive, send and receive emails. So uh, it's a very valuable, very valuable uh, piece of equipment when you're cruising like this. And a delight to be in touch with family and get news from home. We love it. Today it's been very interesting. I mean, one minute we have wind, the next minute we're in the doldrums. But it's about 5.30 in the afternoon now and uh, the sun is going down. Hopefully we'll get a bit of relief from the, uh, the heat. It is so hot and so humid. But I tell you what, up here on the roof, it's rather lovely. Oh, there's Gordon. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you, sir. Beautiful. Isn't it nice up here? Unbelievable. Yeah. That's a room with a view. It is. It is. Ah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> it is. It's beautiful. Come and take a seat. Skippers, skippers alive, stand yep. to attention. <laughs> Cheers, Gordo. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Happy days. Happy days. Put the top on. Gordo. Yeah. How long is it to Charlie? Um, well, it'll be to the top of the Turumalis at Apelio. It's 3,400 nautical miles. Oh, from, from here? From here. Oh, oh my how lord. How many days is that? Well, it depends on the wind. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. Have another drink of rum and cake. We'll oh dear. Yeah. I know. At 160 nautical miles a day at snail's pace. No, no, we can do better than that. I think we can probably average about 180 to 199. Yeah, when this <laughs> when this uh, trade wind kicks in. Yes. That's we, only yeah. 15 days. That's right. We could kill them. Oh man, that would be good. Hang on, no, 200. It's not 15. No, 70. Ah, it's, yeah. oh, it's a little more than that. Oh. Well, if we do 200 days. nautical miles days. a day, that's, that's 17 days. days. Yeah. They come in wind. We're that's waiting. Not, that's not to Tahiti, though. No, it's close. Well, close to. So it's probably another, another couple of days. Another couple of days. Couple, couple of days. days. Today has been an interesting day. One minute we're becalmed, next minute we have wind that we can put this lovely big sail out. We saw some whales and Phil saw a big manta ray on the top of the water, which was exciting. We almost caught some fish. And what else has happened? Oh, we've had some lovely emails from family and friends. And I can't tell you just how important that is to us all. Getting a message from loved ones at home means so much. In fact, we've got one friend who sends us some really interesting details. Newsy news 
it's, uh, as she said, good news. Yesterday's news was about the three uh, orangutans that escaped from RPA. Apparently the one male and two females escaped whilst they were waiting for the male to have a vasectomy. Anyway, the story ended well. They were recaptured and the, the surgery went ahead and everyone was happy. But we did laugh and it was a good message to receive. So it's all good. It's, <laughs> it's been a good day. I'd rather try and get him in though. Bit of excitement oh, on the boat. Too big for... I'll take the gap. That's what I like. So how big was the fish? That big. That big? Oh, about that? <laughs> that big. <laughs> okay. What's that? 65. 65? Oh my 65? Goodness. No. Oh, it no, it wasn't that big. It was big. It was. 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 excitement here this morning was we uh, looked out and we see another vessel coming our way. It's a large freighter heading down towards Chile and we've been at sea now for eight days, oh, ten days? Ten days, ten yeah. Days. And this is, uh, it's been eight days since we have seen another boat so a lot of excitement. He's coming to within three nautical miles of us. He's heading down towards Chile. We have felt up until now that we're all alone. Crew rest up, preparing for another evening at sea.
So tell me what happened, Gordon. Uh, we've had a few couple of days of uh, uh, concern. We have. Uh, since we two days ago, we loaded a, a new SD card, which is a chart for the Polynesia region, into the chart plotter. Now, which is very necessary for us is. going to Tahiti. Navigating around all the atolls. So what happened, it asks you, and that's normal, we've done it before, they ask, uh, the screen asks you to accept this update, which is an update on, this, on the um, uh, display, which I did. It went through its download process, and when it turned back on, we lost our radio. And coincidentally, we, well, we didn't know at that stage we'd lost the solar, because that happened overnight, I think, or during the late afternoon, and we weren't aware of that. The next day we woke up and looked at our solar display, which you can see up here on the screen. Um, this is our power batteries. Combi is the generator. And this is the solar panels coming in, and there's your consumables. So that's what we're using, the systems on the boat, the fridges, the navigation system, and the autopilot. So yeah, what happened, we looked at this in the morning, and I noticed that about nine or ten o'clock when the sun was really high that it's we just blank. didn't have any solar going in and the power was dropping on the batteries all the time so we went and investigated looked down underneath um, and discovered that the solar controller so the solar controller is in the engine bay it is and it's on the in underneath starboard the starboard side. engine that's up high there's awkward. a there's a main yeah awkward position <laughs> and um so I had to climb in there and get a, a mirror and a torch and I was able to uh, get some photographs and that was actually better to go and photograph and bring it out and you could see how much damage, what had happened. You've got four lines going into the controller, um, two from the battery and two from the panels. The positive on the panel had chased through on the negative on the battery and shortened and melted all the insulation Fused the uh, fitting into the uh, controller box, and uh, because of that shorting, it wasn't working. So we isolated the system, pulled the uh, wiring out, and pulled the controller off. And we had to clean out the uh, box where the little uh, the wire for the positive went into the controller. God, I'm glad I've got two engineers on board. <laughs> So that was a job, and we managed to do that with um, picking at it for a while, but then we got the drill and drilled out the, the burnt and fused copper, and then picked it all out, and then we freed it up with a little bit of WD, magic stuff, and um, we cut the wires back, we insulated it well, and we put it all back together, and guess what? Voila. Voila. It worked. Oh, I'll tell you fantastic. what. Fantastic. So we can Fantastic. sleep tonight. I'll tell you what, I wasn't sleeping last night. <laughs> anyway. Well, good result. Well done, guys. We've fallen into a pattern with Night Watch where I do 8 till 11 at night, and then Phil comes up at 11 and goes through till 2, and then Gordon's 2 till 5. So that means that by 5 o'clock, I'm back on duty and I get to enjoy all of this. Daybreak really is magical. Oh, oh what happened? Oh. Right, that's fine. What did it end up on the floor? Mm, nothing like breakfast on the off the kitchen floor. <laughs> well, good on you, Gordon. You're going further afield. Just keep going. Get the whole floor done. <laughs> Not just it's the breakfast like cereal. Oh, it's a bit bumpy. <laughs> yeah, it's washing day on the Elba 45. It's fantastic. We've got a 7 kilo LG washing machine on board and uh, yeah, we can manage all of this whilst underway. Nothing like the smell of fresh washing in the air. This is uh, part of our system we have on board, the Iridium Go. This is how we keep in touch with our family and friends when we're on the uh, move. So I'll just give you an email. 
and uh, and I'll send that through now to what they call the art box that comes up with a, a symbol and we're using what they call the Iridium mail and web system it's a satellite based link and we'll just select this the device which is the iPad is now connecting up to the router which is our little um, black box on board that then sends a signal up through the antenna we have mounted on the back of the boat and uh, connects up to the satellite network the Iridium network sends through our email and then uh, we close up the system and I'll just show you the front page and give you an idea what that looks like once this is done so this will take a few minutes now this is the uh, connection page it's sending files through to the server it's closed it's done we now close up the system and this is our um, app page the app that we have on board from here also we can get wind and weather this is where Louise is putting together her daily posts that go out on the predict wind tracking system and from here we can also get the uh, the weather so I'll just hit this button here and this will then show you day by day and uh, what the weather and the wind is as we move along this little white dot on the screen I'll just show you that's our current position and it's saying the wind here today is around 13 knots which is roughly what we have well we have actually got a 13 knots and it's coming very closely from the east at the moment so that diagram there is simply um, a prediction it is and there's there's Galapagos there's South America uh, and here's Tahiti so we can only download a certain um, amount of data every time it's limited to the download uh, ability of the satellite system so we get a six day picture as we travel and that allows us to uh, just have a think about our sales and what we're going to be doing over the next few days in terms of um, well in terms of our wind and what we're doing with our traveling and sail setting etc very very comforting to have this system on board if we were to see a lot of weather, a lot of heavy weather coming our way. Um, well, we're just prepared. We can put a reef in. Yep. We can adjust uh, the sails we have up, put up a more conservative sail setting, or in light winds. As today, we've got the big red sail up, and that's allowing us to get along at uh, a little over half the wind speed. a nautical mile uh, point to go so yeah what is the day today day 15 we're in now from friday, friday, friday. friday. and we're 15 days out from panama so 15 days and goodness knows how many more are here <laughs> Fourteen. That's eleven gusts in fourteen. The five across. So these are these are these patches of patches of um, and that's Sunday, Monday morning. So it's it's pretty steady the wind. wanted to show you how nice and quiet it is down in the cabin. 
This is the owner's side and uh, it's a beautiful little oasis away from the noise of the water outside and the wind. You'll notice we don't have any fancy decor um, happening at the moment. <laughs> Everything's very basically fitted out, um, which is suiting us. But what I wanted to show, of course, is just um, how comfortable it is, the Elba 45, for long distance cruising on the open ocean. You can hear that lapping of the water on the hulls. It's a beautiful sound. of day 16 and we're doing okay. We're traveling well and getting along, getting closer to Tahiti. And the good news is we still have some vegetables in the refrigerator. So tonight it's quiche with a little salad. And uh, yeah, we'll see how long <laughs> the food lasts. There's certainly the fresh food that uh, the fridge is getting a little, little empty, but still, bits and pieces there to make a meal. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's been a good day. Well, what you're looking at here is our predict wind download now for today. Um, we, uh, we can utilise a series of models uh, of modelling that they use to come up with these predictions. We're using this European model and just starting the timeline running and the little boats come down showing you the weather or the, the, the route that they would predict would be the most ideal for that weather pattern that they've used or weather prediction. So as you see the um, little boats traveling down and you've got the days and the hours of the day ticking by and uh, the indications for all the wind strengths as we go. You can click on here and you can get a, a readout of the wind. Uh, you can get gusts, that'll show you the gusts as well. You've got a series of selections that you can use. And these are all, all predictions, of course. They are. But it's been pretty uh, spot on, hasn't it? Our experience with this it predict has. wind. It has. Yeah, and it's very, very helpful. So today's is showing us that we've got uh, a breeze of 14 knots possibly with gusts that may go up to 19. So we're not seeing that at the moment. We're seeing close to it, 13 knots. Uh, more east than they are predicting, but again, it's just a prediction. So Coming back on deck at 5 a.m. each morning has its privileges. I get to see the sunrise every day. And uh, today, it's a special treat because the sun is rising one side and on the other side the moon, that beautiful full moon that we've had all night is creeping down towards the ocean's edge. Eighteen days out from Panama and um, just checking out the bridges. They look a little bit light on, but we're still doing okay. We've still got some fresh, um, fresh produce and things in the freezer, and of course all of our dry goods. Plenty of rice, plenty of pasta. We'll be right. Here we have our water maker and generator in the 
port side access area. The controls for your water maker are in here as well as in the cabin. So we can do a uh, select it on, off and auto rinse. 65 litres per hour, 12 volt aqua base water maker. Uh, there are a few items on here we use during maintenance. This uh, bleed valve here and it has an auto salinator or, or saline sensor which uh, gives you the solenoid valve activation to let the fresh water run to your tank once it's happy with the uh, quality of the water through these big tubes uh, where the membranes are. So yeah, we flush through quite a bit of salt water. The waste gets pumped out to sea. And after we're uh, happy with the amount of water we made, we do hit that uh, the blue button and that'll give us an auto flush which runs fresh water from the tank through a carbon filter and then it runs it through the system to flush out any build up of product in the system. I found the fishing in the Pacific to be Massive frustrating. Fish. We were expecting to catch some mahi mahi. We caught one and then we caught a small tuna but after that we, we pulled the lure for days and days and eventually we did start we, we ended up catching some enormous fish that were giant tuna I, I suspect because it took me ages to get these things anywhere toward the boat and then in the end I just didn't want to have a fish that big come on board so we ended up breaking them off so unfortunately we went for a week or two without catching anything uh, edible I suppose and we were eating fish though <laughs> Fortun oh, yeah. fortunately we Fortunately, we had some frozen salmon that we had purchased whilst in Panama, and it was delicious. What, the lure's but, gone, uh, the trace is still yeah, there? We were expecting to catch our own fish a lot more wow. than we did. Big fish. But it did improve as we continued on our journey. We ended up catching some fish. No fish, though. Ah, oh, I'm wrecked. <laughs> Lunch is served. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. This is great looking fish. <laughs> Anyway, hopefully it won't be too much longer before we're in Tahiti, uh, but you will notice that we're using the frozen salmon. We haven't been too successful with fishing at the moment. Hopefully as we get closer to Tahiti, we'll catch some nice mahi mahi as we could do with a, a bit of um, supplement to our lard. Have you watched the sun? There you guys Phil. <laughs> and we're looking for the green flash. Yes, that was it. That was it. That was as clear as. <laughs> I'd say um, it could be a nice mahi mahi or a small tuna. Okay. Yeah, baby. Because that's Woo. about all that's out here we can catch. Okay. Do you want me to slow the boat down, Gordo? No, we're going uh, just fine. Thank you. 
Okay, we've only just got it up to speed again. <laughs> now that might be a nice buy here. That's um, good. Oh, oh no! <laughs> dear. Oh, oh, the look of disappointment. Oh, dear. I didn't yeah. even take the strain. Water is the most amazing blue, isn't it? It is. the sun gets up. It's overhead during the day. It just gets amazing. And it's warm, isn't it? 31 degrees there. Yeah, right. Our five o'clock drinkies has been interrupted as we were sitting up on the roof enjoying the late afternoon we looked over and uh, there were birds flying around and diving into the water obviously after some fish and we sat there and said you know what we might even catch something here and guess what the line took off so here we are oh my god <laughs> a fish a fish at last! Let's see if we can land this one. We haven't had a lot of success up until now. This may take some time. Just make sure you don't crush your balls. Go the trays and just lift him out. Yeah, I think so. I don't want to lose him. No, I'll just keep the pressure on it and keep him up. So he can't get out. Right, just quickly up on the deck. Quick, up on the deck. That's it. Right, where's the bucket? There's the bucket. Right, put his head in the bucket if you can. First. Right, that's it. Well done, Pete. Well done. Right. Tuna. What sort of tuna is it? Striped tuna, I think. Yeah. It is too, a yeah. And it's a blue. Looks that blue. Oh my god, look at the blue on his back. Isn't that pretty? Here we are. How many days out from Tahiti? We're hoping only three about and a half three. Days and we'd be calm. Check I, it out. I think we might be five days. I think oh, so. If there's even six. You got enough food, Blue? If it's calm like this. I think I'll yeah, put the I think out. we'll survive. <laughs> oh, we so. caught a beautiful tuna last night. I think we might go fishing. I might even have a swim. Yeah. That was, that was scared of living daylight. Yeah. Fishing. A swim would be nice. It's very, very humid here. Very hot. And the wind's really picking up. It's up to five knots. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we want more. And we're doing three knots of eight speed all of a sudden. Oh my god. Are we going in the right direction? We're heading straight for our waypoint. Right. It's the way to go. It's just such an eerie feeling at the moment. Um, as we say, we're hoping to be in Tahiti in about three or four days. Uh, so this is actually our 30th day at sea. But as you can see, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of rain squalls around. When we're in amongst those, we do get wind. But in between, it is just so, so quiet frustratingly quiet. Anyway, we'll get there. Okay, so while we wait for the wind, what else will we do? Make the time pass. We'll have a game of cards. Don't look now, but we have some wind. Anyway, we'll keep playing the game. Yeah. Who's go? Oh, I'd like to say something before you turn it off. Hmm? We need to get the red sail up as soon as possible. 
We Wait will. Once, once we get the... Uh, After my go. Yeah. Gosh, this is a different scene tonight, isn't it, to our usual drinkies time up on the upper deck. Sunset Lounge. And it's not sunset we're looking at tonight. That's actually lightning over there. Oh, there is sunset. There it is. Oh, look at that. Oh, I wish we had some wind. We're calmed and it's we're just wallowing around. Do you furl that or leave it out, Derek? Like the Genoa? Yeah. Oh, well, well, I reckon it's bloody gonna damage it. So frustrating, isn't it? Horrible. Anyway, cheers everyone. Oh, I saw lightning then too. Cheers, Gorda. Cheers. <laughs> cheers, Phil. End of another day. Lots of card playing today. Oh. Look at that ocean. Flat as, no wind. Lots of cups of tea and games of cards. How frustrating. It's always interesting going through squalls. One minute we've got lots of wind, rain pouring down. Once you get through it, look at this, as calm as can be. Are you going captain? Washing down the boat. So now we've just uh, put our clears back up now they've been washed. There we go. Right. Looks beautiful out there now. Right. You never need, know. All we need now is some breeze. Yeah. Is that an engine I hear? Yes, we decided to uh, try and clear you know, the top of this atoll here before this number of storm cell gets to us. Coming down our way. Good idea. It's all a bit close here. The reef, if we're actually going to pass within a couple of metres of this thing. So. We anticipated that our passage from Panama to Tahiti would take us about 21 to 30 days, but in the end, with lots of light wind to contend with, it took us 35 days. 
unfortunately the trade winds that are prevalent across this part of the world didn't eventuate. Uh, they normally set in around the February, March and they southeast trades blowing at 15 to 20 knots normally but for, for us we ended up with uh, easterlies even up to the northeast and they were light so we had to really work hard at the Jenica and do a lot of downwind sailing which we managed but uh, unfortunately that was the main reason that took us those extra days to get to Tahiti. Yeah, the wind strength was very varied. It was frustrating at times. Tell you what, I'm really impressed with the fridge on the Elba 45. After 32 days at sea, we're still having fresh vegetables. Well, maybe not so fresh, but we're still having vegetables. When we were passing around the islands of the Galapagos, we started to get some information from home through family emailing us and telling us about the concerns about the virus and just what was happening all around the world. Yeah, so this was the unfolding of this um, pandemic that was happening. We were not getting normal news, we were relying on family and friends to pass on little bits of information and we weren't getting the big picture really and uh, we weren't experiencing what everyone else was in terms of the stress as this happened. But we were living in this parallel universe of clean healthy conditions I suppose out there and venturing, adventuring on our boat. So yes, we were isolated from all that in a way, but... The, the strange thing though for us was getting our head around the fact that there were we, isolated on the boat, three people in the middle of the ocean, and our family and friends were telling us that they too were needed to become isolated at home, do exactly the same thing as us. Yes, yeah, so our um, entry into Tahiti then became an interesting exercise because we realised that things were changing, that the island was going to be going into a lockdown phase as well. And it wasn't just Tahiti that was locked down. Every island in the Pacific was locked down, so it was very important that we followed the rules. We were told that we must go into Tahiti, um, into Papiete, that's where the authorities wanted us and that we would be restricted once we got there. And they circled the boat. This is behind some of the atolls as we head towards Tahiti and the water here is just so, so calm. 32 nice. degrees. 32 degrees the water, very hot, but um, very calm conditions nice gentle breeze sometimes a bit too gentle but we're getting there hopefully in a couple of days we'll reach Tahiti so as we progressed we kept up emailing with multi-health solutions and their team especially Greg Waller he then put us in contact with an agent on the ground in Papiete, and we had also been in touch with another friend there. They then combined resources, arranged our entry, sent through forms that we had to have filled in, and they then, we, we put the detail down in an email, they then forwarded those uh, forms on for us. So the authorities were expecting us and were able to give us instruction even before we got there. Yeah, it, was, it all worked rather well actually. So it was a little bit surreal knowing that we were going to enter into a port that was actually in shutdown. So It certainly wasn't the visit to Tahiti that we expected to have. I was picturing going out to have a meal at a restaurant, enjoy some of the um, island's scenic um, adventures and uh, particularly to get into the water and do some snorkeling, some diving or something, but that wasn't to be. Not to be. No. 
Luckily for us, we had a very good friend, David Luce, there that able to speak with the authorities and explain our situation that we wanted to just restock, refuel and depart for Australia. And that was, in the end, that was accepted as a reason for us to go. So we were allowed to uh, refuel and after three days we were on our way to Australia. After hearing what the world state was um, in regard to the COVID virus, we were just keen to get home. We just wanted to get home to our family, make sure that they were safe and that we stayed safe too. Happy A-Day! Happy A-Day!